The next significant resistance that I see for Litecoin on the high time frame is right here. As you can see, since 2017, we put in this high and then we came again. We put in this high in 2021. That is depicted by this line. We've tested it once, twice. I think we tested again a third time and that third time is also going to yield a, a not a rejection, but a uh, retracement. It's not gonna be a rejection in that, like here, complete rejection to the bottom of the range. Here, complete rejection to almost the bottom of the range. Here, I think what we do is put in an impulse to the top here, around $500, thereabouts, and then come back to this level right here. So again, this is why I'm so excited about Litecoin because you're looking to put in a massive move and people are going to be so surprised. We're going to be Litecoin? Why Litecoin? What did Litecoin do? Well, it's all in the charts, my friends. It has nothing to do with any like, you know, partnership or, you know, some whale or anything like that. This is built up, right? This is why I love technical analysis. The cause of the effect that you're looking for, looking to prognosticate upon, you're looking to uh, speculate upon is in the chart. It just needs for you to be able to suss it out and to read it, okay? So in this move to the upside, I feel like Litecoin, best case scenario, does a 5x. Worst case scenario comes to the 0618 of this wave right here, okay? And goes to about $135 per Litecoin, okay? But I think, why am I not like uh, Dogecoin, like, um, what did we just look at? Uh, Link, why why am I not saying, oh, I'm targeting the fire ratio here? Reason being is, yes, we may find a little bit of resistance there and, you know, put in a, a small retracement. But in this trade, I would target the top of the range because this is a range where the, the fire ratio is the midline. And you've been playing with the midline for years and playing around it and breaking it and playing it, playing with it. So break, it's not the first time you've met the phi ratio. Once you test the level, you're eventually going to break it. This is why I'm not saying, oh, I would trade Litecoin to $134 or whatever the phi ratio is on this chart. I would actually trade Litecoin to the top of this range, which is the top of a six year range, a complex wave for, um, uh, Wait, wait for correction, which is closer to $500. Hello everyone, my name is Dean, let's talk crypto. This is where you subscribe for daily Bitcoin updates and technical analysis. We track the price of Bitcoin as a proxy for the cryptocurrency markets at large. Today is November 8th, 2023. And patience in the cryptocurrency markets is now finally being rewarded, okay? And I'm going to show you exactly why we're seeing that on the charts, all right? Obviously, we're going to look at Bitcoin, and today I'm going to follow up with last video and highlight three um, noteworthy cryptocurrencies, altcoins, right? We're going to look at Dogecoin, we're going to look at Link, Chainlink, and we're look, going to look at the Litecoin chart. If that interests you, then watch until the, ver until the very end. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're taking advantage of these moves that we're finally getting in the crypto market. Let's start with Bitcoin as usual, okay? And, you know, nothing's really changed so much. We've been in this range, as you can see right here, this up and to the right range, right? Which I've called an accumulative range. It's very likely an accumulated range because... Uh, more often than not, these types of ranges break to the upside. You start from the bottom, you um, you chop up into the right or consolidate or accumulate up into the right, and then you break up. That's what we call a bull flag, okay? So Bitcoin is bull flagging. It's taking its time. That's okay, okay? This is more likely than not, as I've been saying in my previous analysis uh, analyses, a, a complex wave four correction, right? Probably a triple three WXYXZ, okay? And our target remains 
at the $42,000 level, more specifically on this chart, 42,700. Okay. So nothing has changed with our Bitcoin analysis, right? At the end of the day, whatever you do, do not forget that this 250 day range is very likely to be retested as support because we broke it and it's 250 days, i.e. it's high time frame important resistance. It must be flipped into support before we continue. So if we do move to 42,700, do expect a retracement turning this 250 day resistance as support. Okay, that's Bitcoin. Nothing's changed. Let's move on into our altcoin analysis. Okay. Before I go into the altcoins, I want to just point out Bitcoin dominance, a measure of Bitcoin's dominance relative to the rest of the cryptocurrency market, i.e. if Bitcoin dominance is going up, that means Bitcoin is gaining against other assets in crypto, right? Um, and if Bitcoin dominance is going down, the opposite is true. Altcoins or non-Bitcoin cryptocurrency assets are gaining against Bitcoin. As you can see from this chart on the four hourly time frame. We've been going down in Bitcoin dominance since uh, late uh, October. So, you know, for a few days now, maybe a couple weeks, right? Do you expect this to continue? As I've been saying, if we go on the daily time frame, we can see that this is a quintessential swing failure pattern where you try to make a high, try it again, you should swing down. If anything, you may expect a little bit of consolidation before breaking down, but the eventual move is a breakdown to complete this swing failure pattern and target the next uh, significant support level, which is around the, here. So in any case, what we're looking at is the general trend in Bitcoin dominance and the general trend of Bitcoin dominance is going down. This is exactly what we want to see in a true crypto bull run, in a true crypto uh, expansion. And that is what we call an alt season, where altcoins, the smaller market cap assets are gaining against Bitcoin. They have to because they're smaller in market cap. Some of these market caps are sub $1 million, whereas Bitcoin is half a, uh, a trillion dollar asset, right? Uh, so you're going to have to gain against Bitcoin because it's just a smaller ship, a smaller vessel. It's more nimble. Uh, it's more, uh, yeah, it's more nimble. So anyway, that's Bitcoin dominance. And uh, last but not least, in terms of our indicators, we want to take pay attention to the US dollar currency index. This is what moves everything. This is our liquidity. Uh, remember, I talked about this gap up here. Don't worry. This gap should be filled once our larger pattern right? If you go on the weekly time frame, just uh, have a look really quickly. Our larger pattern, our zigzag is complete. And then eventually we should fill that. So we don't necessarily have to fill that now. Those gaps do fill. As history proves, the gaps in the US dollar currency index do fill. But it's a question of when will they fill? I don't necessarily believe that this gap that we have up here around the 1067 area is going to fill anytime soon. I may be wrong, but we don't necessarily have to fill it now because this is a larger corrective pattern, which should come back upon itself. In any case, uh, what I pointed out last uh, video was the fact that this uh, distribution or consolidation that's breaking down, i.e. distribution uh, range is indeed breaking down as we can see here chop 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 breakdown a break of important support right this is about a 35 to 40 day support and what do you see every single time an important level of support or resistance is broken it has to be retested before continuation so this is exactly what we see here okay a break of important resistance or sorry a break of important support a retest of that important support as resistance. Now we can expect the uh, US dollar currency index to continue to the downside as the trend would suggest. Okay, now let's use the remaining amount of time to look at the altcoins that I've mentioned in the beginning of the video. Guys, if you're getting value, please like, share, and subscribe. I would very greatly appreciate it. Okay, what I say we're going to look at Dogecoin. Let's start with that. Okay. Let's start on the daily time frame. 
Uh, and I am, I haven't really done this, so we're going to do it together. You know, I don't really prepare uh, per se, you know, because I do this every day. This is just something I do. Uh, but look at this chart. What's the first thing that jumps out at you? And obviously, all of these assets have been examined once upon a time, so that's why they're marked up. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking. The, the first thing that jumps out at me is this. On the daily time frame, Dogecoin against US dollar uh, or US uh, dollar uh, tether. So same thing, USDT. I'm seeing this range. And this range to me is a falling range or falling uh falling wedge you would call it right a falling wedge i.e this whole entire bear market was generally going down as you would expect the bear market to do but in this case we're going down and sideways down and sideways down and sideways so as i depicted with this blue range this resistance right here is crucial, right? Right about where we're at now, around seven and a half cents. Breaking that to the upside should yield a violent move because that's a very important resistance, okay? How important of a resistance is that? Well, that resistance, this um, the top resistance of this blue range is almost exactly a year, 363 days, right? 363 days of Dogecoin chopping into this um this range okay and it looks like it's going to prove accumulation prove to be accumulative right meaning uh it's going to eventually chop up now what we want to do is identify our next major level of resistance to the upside so let's say that this does indeed break up which we think it should okay if it does indeed break up where should we look to take profit where should we expect some level of resistance well look left okay there's a few ways you can do this but a few tried and true ways i would first start with looking at the chart and you can see on the chart is a level of support previous support is going to be resistance when you're below it support when you're above it so the chart is showing us that around 15 to 16 cents there was quite a bit of support for quite some time later on that support became resistance Okay, please, uh, let, let, let me put this in properly so you guys can see it. Um, here we go. So this is the level I, I'm looking at, okay? And obviously you can do this using in, indicators and all that stuff, but you know, it's, it's a good idea to think this through and not be overly reliant on indicators. And this is all the stuff that we do during bear markets so that when bull markets come, we're sharp and we're able to trade the markets with a high degree of accuracy and, and maximize our profit, um, our, our ability to make profits. So this level that I just drew out works so well historically, okay, in Dogecoin, because like I said, it served as, resist, uh, as support between April of 2021 and about December of 2021. So pretty much for eight months, and then it became resistance when we dip below it. We dip below it some more, and it was a clear level of resistance on the check back, on the retracement right here. So I think with a high degree of probability, the next significant resistance for Dogecoin is around that 16 cent mark. And the other way I would do this is using our Fibonacci retracement tool. I would take the top of this move all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom. Okay, which is about here-ish. Something like that. And I would actually look at the fire ratio. The 0618 fire ratio is very important. It is usually resistance when you're below it, support when you're above it. So for me, mathematically that is the level that is the big resistance that may be of resistance right here but if given the choice between this level that you know we acquired just by looking at previous price action and this level that we used by looking at you know the the fibonacci retracement level i'm taking this level because i'm 
almost positive that if you take your Fibonacci retracement tool from this high, look what you get. Do you see that? You get another fire ratio. But that's not it, right? This is going to be a resistance. It's not going to be the end resistance. What's likely to happen at this level is you get some sort of choppy wave four complex correction, but then you get one final leg up. The final leg up for me uh, in the uh, in in the short term for dogecoin where i would look to take profit is around 26 cents i hope that's not too confusing i'm gonna move on because uh, we don't have too much time but i hope that makes sense so i'm looking for dogecoin before any major retracements to make about a 247 percent move okay it will find resistance at the 15 to 16 cent level um but it won't retrace greatly until it gets to about 26 cents. Okay, that's what I'm seeing from Dogecoin. Let's move on to our next asset, which I said is Chainlink. Chainlink is really interesting. And I chose Chainlink um, because I really want to illustrate something. And I hope this will help everyone. Okay, so I said in the beginning of the video and the title of this video is likely to be something like um, cryptocurrency investors and traders are finally rewarded or patience is finally rewarded in cryptocurrencies. Something like that. I haven't figured out the exact wording. But look at Chainlink on the weekly time frame. Okay, so you can see massive amounts of consolidation here. Okay, approximately 500 days worth. Okay, that's pretty much what we got in all of crypto. After a heinous move down in three waves, right? We expect that these corrective uh, moves, uh, as uh, Ralph Nelson Elliott told us, typically come in flavors of three. We got a three wave move all the way to the bottom. And this proved to be the bottom of this, um, this market, right? Around $5 for Chainlink. Now, thereafter, you got 500 days of choppy consolidation, which led finally to a markup, okay? So what I wanna say is this, Chainlink is an example of what you should expect in the rest of the market in so many ways. Firstly, it's catching up to Bitcoin. Bitcoin year to year, is up about 100%, a little more than 100%, okay? And altcoins uh, recently hadn't moved, if anything, right, in 2023, right? Because right, remember, 500 days of sideways price action. So you're not getting much of anything, whereas Bitcoin's up almost 100%, if not 100 plus percent. But now these altcoins are finally catching up. And Chainlink, for instance, in 2023, is already up, last I looked, about 80%, okay? Around 80%. All right, this is a level, or actually more, 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 about 120%, okay? So altcoins are catching up in terms of gains. That's one. Two, they're catching up in terms of, uh, well, it's really gains. That's pretty much it. I, I forgot why I wanted, what else I wanted to say. So I'm just going to leave it. If I forgot it, it's probably not significant. Uh, but altcoins are catching up in terms of gains. That's the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing I wanted to say is be careful about investing too late, especially if you're opening positions that are likely to be threatened with liquidation levels, i.e. Um, you know, trading contracts. So Chainlink, if you wanted to determine its next significant resistance, you would do the same thing that we did um, in the previous asset, right? In Dogecoin, you would take the orthodox high of the drop from to the orthodox low, right? From the orthodox high, which is around um, this level of $38, right? So again, one, two, three waves, three, three wave move down 
and then into a long drawn out consolidation, long drawn out accumulation, which is an, a consolidation that breaks up, right? So now what you want to do is measure the fire ratio, which is likely going to be resistance when you're below it, right? Support when you're above it. We're currently below it. That's around $18.28. What else do we see? We see that historically this distribution, right? This move occurred over here. Okay, in this region, not exactly at $18.28, but in this region. Also in this region, on the way up in the previous bull market, you found some resistance. So resistance, support, support, the top of this move. So you can say between the 0.5 and the 618, that is a pocket that is likely going to prove resistance next time Chainlink meets it. And we're coming close. So... I want to uh, issue a warning to late investors, late traders to something like Chainlink, right? Chainlink's been up for quite a bit, for almost two months straight, okay? 50 some odd days, about 50 days. Now is not the time to jump into that trade because you're likely going to find some resistance around the $18.28 where you get a distribution and finally a retracement down. Why am I saying a retracement down with a high degree of probability? Once again, 500 days resistance that was broken to the upside. What do you expect is going to happen once we eventually manage to, you know, find some resistance? We're going to drop back down, retrace, and treat this previous resistance as new support more likely than not okay and the other thing i really like about this let's clean up the chart is if you take your fibonacci retracement tool from the purported bottom of this impulse in chain link all the way to the um to the purported top around 18 dollars and 28 cents what do you see where do you see the fire ratio the ever important fire ratio which is indicative of our retracement level in uh, of an impulse, maximal retracement of an impulse, you see that the fire ratio is right back at the neckline of your 500 day resistance. So you would essentially be putting in a five waves up, three waves down, quintessential Elliott wave impulse and retracement wave one, wave two. And that wave two would come back down all the way down to the $8.80 level, $85.90 cent level to retest 500 days of resistance at support, which you would expect in the case of a continuation, okay? The only reason we would want to come back down here is if we want to continue to the upside. If you don't care about continuation to the upside, you never need to retest high time frame resistance as support, in which case at some point, you're just going to put in a swing failure pattern, which I do not believe will be the case. So that's what I want to say about Chainlink. Be very careful about one, getting in too late, two, the impending distribution okay and this is important to talk about i don't know if anybody's talking about this you know especially given the fact that a lot of assets are finally starting to move chain link just so happens to be uh like blur uh ahead of schedule right and now finally catching up with bitcoin the last and final uh, asset that I want to look at is Litecoin. And this is one of my favorites. Okay. I've been looking at Litecoin for quite some time. Litecoin's interesting. People have uh, given it a really bad name because of its price action history. Its price action history is simply a, uh, what we call a leading diagonal in Elliott wave theory, where you have concerted and a concerted impulse where your wave three was not traditionally long, right? One, six, one, eight to two Fibonacci extensions of wave one retracement of wave two. Your wave three is actually in uh, the case of a leading diagonal, the same height as, as your wave one. So you see here, you have wave one, wave two, wave three. That's simply the same size as wave one. And then you had a protracted wave four. Okay. And when I'm talking about protracted wave four, I'm talking about a wave four that's lasted almost six years okay this is why people think litecoin is not a good asset 
okay you can see 2135 days of being in this channel and why am i such a fan of litecoin one fundamentally it's very sound it's been around the block for quite some time it's uh, it stood the chance uh the test of time it's not been hacked or anything like that it's very stable it's very steady eddy mm -hmm. and technically speaking if you look at its chart when you get into a leading diagonal basically you're you're consolidating 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 way to think about consolidation is you're accumulating and you're setting up it's like you're storing and storing and storing and storing and storing and eventually all that consolidation all that uh potential energy is going to be expressed kinetically to the upside all right or through the downside just depending on what the, the chart looks like but in this case it's to the upside that is going to yield an explosive move okay the next significant resistance that I see for Litecoin on the high time frame is right here. As you can see, since 2017, we put in this high and then we came again. We put in this high in 2021. That is depicted by this line. We've tested it once, twice. I think we tested again a third time and that third time is also going to yield a, a not a rejection, but a uh, retracement. It's not gonna be a rejection in that, like here, complete rejection to the bottom of the range. Here, complete rejection to almost the bottom of the range. Here, I think what we do is put in an impulse to the top here, around $500, thereabouts, and then come back to this level right here. So again, this is why I'm so excited about Litecoin because you're looking to put in a massive move and people are going to be so surprised. We're going to be Litecoin? Why Litecoin? What did Litecoin do? Well, it's all in the charts, my friends. It has nothing to do with any like, you know, partnership or, you know, some whale or anything like that. This is built up, right? This is why I love technical analysis. The cause of the effect that you're looking for, looking to prognosticate upon, you're looking to uh, speculate upon is in the chart. It just needs for you to be able to suss it out and to read it okay so in this move to the upside i feel like litecoin best case scenario does a 5x worst case scenario comes to the 0618 of this wave right here okay and goes to about 135 dollars per litecoin okay but i think why am i not like uh, Dogecoin, like um, what did we just look at? Uh, Link. Why? Why am I not saying? Oh, I'm targeting the fire ratio here. Reason being is yes, we may find a little bit of resistance there, and you know, put in a, a small retracement. But in this trade, I would target the top of the range because this is a range where the the fire ratio is the midline, and you've been playing with the midline for years. And playing around it and breaking it and playing it playing with it so break it's not the first time you've met the phi ratio once you test the level you're eventually going to break it this is why i'm not saying oh i would trade litecoin to 134 dollars or whatever the phi ratio is on this chart i would actually trade litecoin to the top of this range which is the top of a six-year range a complex wave for um uh, way for correction which is closer to five hundred dollars right more specifically four hundred and sixty seventy dollars okay so that's all i have for you today uh hope this was helpful hope this was useful like share and subscribe if you got value and i will see you next time